Don Oman, and I'm the co-founder of Sparling. We are the first company in history okay. to make okay. liquid fuel out of thin air, and we do that at price parity with fossil fuels. Hello everyone, my name is Adam Ahmad and you guys heard that right. We're making, air, we're making fuel straight out of air and we're the first ones in history to make fuel out of air. And the nice thing about this fuel is, is, is that it's convenient, it's liquid fuel, just like your gasoline, like your, like your diesel, so it's compatible with existing infrastructure. But for us to get to this point, uh, we had to make this huge paradigm shift in how we approach the technology in making renewable fuels. So. Currently, there's this industry called the carbon capture and utilization industry. And this industry basically recycles CO2 and converts it into valuable chemicals and fuels. But the, the issue with this industry is they're using technologies that were like established that, like, hundreds of years ago. And they use technologies like membranes, catalysts, and zellulites. Um, you guys probably don't know those terms because those terms uh, are not commercial today. Uh, you don't see them in the industry today. So what you're looking at here today um, if you can uh, go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the current, um, uh, the current supply chain of making sustainable fuels. You have to capture the carbon dioxide, you have to get the H2 from electrolysis, and then you put them in these uh, reactors, and you combine the H2 and the, 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 the carbon and, and produce uh, renewable fuels, whether it's gasoline, whether it's uh, diesel and jet fuel. But the, the issue is, um, you know, you're, you're doing the capture and you're doing the electrolysis. Those all cost steps. Every step, you reduce the efficiency. So what we've done is we've removed the capture and we've removed the electrolysis and we went to straight into the, the, uh, the, the fuel production. So what we have here is, is basically a, a reactor that reacts with carbon dioxide straight from the air and, and, uh, and, and water and makes uh, renewable fuel. So if you can uh, go to the next slide. So this is our reactor. We're sending these pulses. It's made out of chips only, uh, steel and chips. So this is like the first microchip-based um, um, you know, fuel synthesis reactor. Um, it's like Silicon Valley before the, the chip revolution. They were, um, you know, they, were, um, uh, they were stuck with these computers that would fit the size of this room. But then they moved to the chip, and that's where the revolution happened. So we've done exactly that, and we put the chip, uh, the whole climate chemistry inside this chip, and, and we're sparking this new uh, era. So um, the fuel that we produce is methanol. So if you can go to the next slide, please. And to, be to best uh, describe what methanol's potential is, uh, by referencing this uh, Nobel Prize winner, George Ola, he's a legend in the fossil fuel industry, and he says, if we can produce methanol efficiently and on a large scale from atmospheric carbon dioxide and hydrogen, it could replace oil and gas both as a, as a fuel and as a chemical raw material. So we're talking about oil and gas, the two largest markets, and if you can produce them efficiently and on a large scale, uh, it can replace both of them. And just to go a little deeper into that, um, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so methanol is, is, uh, is used as a fuel for the maritime industry, and it can be converted into, uh, into all the other chemicals and fuels um, and it's also a convenient energy storage because it's liquid at room temperature. So, uh, you know, it's compatible with existing infrastructure. So, as, as you said, the issue is with this vision is making it at a large scale and efficiently. And, uh, you know, we're, our technology promises that and achieves that. And uh, I wish George Ola was still alive today uh, because his vision is coming to reality. And I'm going to show you it. Here it is. Can we go to the demo? Let's, let's turn to the demo. So this is my partner, he's Abed. Um, he's, he's currently uh, in our lab in Austria. He's heading to the reactor. And so this is our reactor here. Uh, I hope you can hear me. So this is basically a two meter chamber in the air and it's the world's first cold plasma reactor that can convert CO2 into methanol. And here we got a methanol sensor that we can monitor converting CO2 from air into uh, methanol. So let me turn on this thing here. So it will take a few seconds to stabilize the plasma. And here we go. 
So these are for every fault of this plasma, we, we convert CO2 directly from air into methanol. So if we look to the temperature for this plasma, it's almost room temperature, it's like 100 Fahrenheit. And if we go to methanol sensor here, we can see it starts to read out and increasing the value of methanol flow as we, uh, like the bus keeps going up. So this is really the world first reactor that converts CO2 directly from air into methanol in one single step. So thank you. Yeah, so we're not capturing the carbon dioxide here. This is straight air and water. And you know we miss the water into the chamber, so we get the hydrogen, and we react in both, and we capture the methanol in a water tank. So what this does is it brings the cost of capture and carbon capture and utilization uh, to zero because you can capture the methanol in a, in a simple water tank because methanol dissolves in water, so you don't need to like have these membranes and, and uh, other sorbent materials that separate the carbon from the air. So by converting it first to methanol and capturing the methanol, you bring the cost of capture to zero. If you can go to the next slide, our plan is to put this reactor uh, into, in this container where we ship it to our clients. Uh, they have industrial emissions, and we convert their industrial emissions uh, into methanol directly. So we take their emissions and we convert it directly into methanol. Uh, we also have plans to, to, um, to, to you know, distribute it uh, in the future, uh, this container, and you can produce methanol anywhere that has air and water, so basically everywhere. And uh, yeah, so th yeah, so if you can go to the next slide. So as we said, this is a chip-based- Wrap it up. Yeah, this is a chip-based reactor. Uh, this is how we plan to scale this up. Uh, we, we go from, from a small reactor uh, to a larger one, and we plan to like distribute these uh, throughout the world. And you know, you can uh, remove uh, gigatons of CO2 with so few reactors. It's, it's um, like 100 times more efficient than any other uh, reactor. So that's, uh, that's our technology uh, on the, if you go to the next slide. Yeah, so right now uh, we complete the pan. Pretty much year. out of time. Can you give yeah, us a thanks. final thought? Yeah, so last but not least, uh, ultimately we're the first company to make fuel out of air. I mean, uh, that's super revolutionary. Um, you know, this is, this is a new paradigm that we're entering in. Um, uh, it's like you can just simply plug it into a wall outlet and uh, put it anywhere in the world and you're making liquid fuel. And this liquid fuel is compatible with the existing infrastructure and you recycle gigatons of CO2 into fuel. Thank you. Thank you, Spiral Wave. <laughs> Judges, who has questions? V very cool, thank you. How would you characterize the key technical risks as you scale up? Can you repeat that question? How would you characterize the key technical risks as you scale up? So uh, technical risk-wise, there's no technical risk. Um, the reactor is producing methanol. You guys observed it. Um, the only um, steps to continue further developing this is increasing the airflow so we can get more CO2 interacting with the plasma. And that's like just optimization uh, processes. But technical risk, um, there's, there's not, um, like, with, with what's currently established, there's, there's no risk. Um, and uh, that's for our microbeam, that's the one that does from air, but from the one, th but, but the reactor that converts industrial emissions into methanol, uh, that one is completely commercially ready. So we take flue gas, and you don't have to worry about having a, a low concentration of CO2, because you know air is like 0.04% CO2. Uh, with industrial emissions, it's like from like 6 to 9, 10%. So you have more CO2 that you can convert into fuel. So for that device that you showed, that you said is commercial ready, what would be the cost of methanol coming out of there? Right, so obviously this reactor's uh, main cost is electricity. So that's what's the input. So if you have uh, two, percent elect uh, two cents electricity, you can produce it below its price uh, point in the market today, which gives you the chance to sell it at price parity. And then for scaling up, you said more airflow was one of the key levers. That's, that's right. You I need to interact more CO2, get more CO2 you know, crossing the chamber, so you can you know, convert more of that CO2 into, in, into methanol. So if you solve that problem, you could then be cost competitive with fuels. For the, for the microbeam, for the one that does it with direct air, and we plan to do that like next year. But for this year, we're, we're working on commercializing the, the flue gas to, 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 uh, to fuel, because you don't have to worry about the low concentration of CO2. How are you, so I think I understood the response to Rohan's question. I mean, maybe there's no science risk. I mean, there's always engineering risk, I think, in terms of scaling. 
but I'm curious your take on like what is your IP strategy here as well? Assuming everything is right. looking like it is, what are the core IP components that you have to protect? I mean, we, you know, it's, it's the ignition. That's the, that's the core revolution here. It's, it's how you ignite low temperature plasma at room temperature. I mean, at, at atmospheric pressure. So uh, this is the, the core technological breakthrough, the, the yeah. core scientific breakthrough. It's, you know, plasmas, they're hard to ignite and they require super high energy to ignite. And when you ignite them, they're ignited in a non-uniform way, so the energy is, is distributed uh, non-uniformly. So you have like cold spots, hot spots, uh, but the, the core here is created, creating this uniform uh, plasma. Um, so you have even temperature throughout the, the plasma field, and you're, you're creating this avalanche of ions. You know, it like goes from the bottom to the top, uh, and that's like, uh, just a much more efficient way. So you, so you have an efficient way of, of, of igniting this plasma that's low temperature, which enables the production of methanol. So there's different parts uh, that, that go into the IP, but this is the core breakthrough in the science. That's like the core breakthrough in the, in the, in the microchip and how, how you create a microchip that enables this uh, plasma to ignite. But then we add the software over that on how to, uh, how to produce the methanol, how we, uh, you know, calibrate different uh, parameters of the chamber of the reactor to bias towards the formation of methanol. Maybe walk us through what does uh, commercialization look like and like if you were to predict the next two years of the company from a scaling perspective, what one. do you want it to look like? So, uh, so right now, um, the largest methanol plant produces 2,500 tons of, of methanol. And to put that in perspective, that's one tenth of what a single container vessel ship uh, consumes. So uh, it's super not scalable at all. Uh, with 10 containers, we can, uh, we can have today the, the largest methanol plant. And our plan is to sell these containers to industrial emitters and they can convert the methanol, they can convert the CO2 into methanol and uh, we can sell it uh, to these shipping companies that are urgently needing green methanol. And we can also have our private plants where we can uh, create fuel directly from air independent of anyone, independent of a flue gas emitter, uh, just wherever we have the cheapest cost of electricity. All right, give it up for Spiral Wave. Thank you, guys. <laughs>